So if you if you want to measure your success by anything, measure your success by your ability to obey God. And that's why we, 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 we have to become so sound in our approach to why it is that God has called us out of darkness, out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, what God is actually doing, what he's actually accomplishing in our life. And if we don't become spiritually fit, spiritually fit spiritually in our soul and our body, it's possible to be going through a religious experience, but not really being effective, healthy enough to see that God is using an imperfect vessel to accomplish great and mighty things. We could be so self-absorbed. If we're not healthy, God is not able to use us to the degree that we become selfless and we focus on others even in the midst of our own pain. And can I tell you that my life was distraught during that time? My life was upside down during that time. I was in the ministry but I was still messed up. <laughs> but in my messed up state, here I am going out ministering to people. <laughs> And I don't know, to this moment, that was my question. Lord, what has happened to all of these people that you use me to minister to and I've never seen them again? You don't know what's happening with those people. You don't know what God has done with them, what God has sent them. And when you, oh Shabbat, and when you get to glory, God will show you the extent of your obedience. That these people who you're touching have become people who are touching probably thousands of people that you and I will never touch. But God said, that's your fruit. That's your fruit. That's your fruit. So if you, if you want to measure your success by anything, measure your success by your ability to obey God. A pit of despair, whatever it is. He's, he's, there, he's there right there trying to tell your daughter, son, I'm with you in this. Listen, somewhere in our sanctified soul and imagination, we got to believe every day that we're walking with God, even when you can't see him. Even when you can't see him. That you're walking with God. See, if you really believe that you're walking with God, he can help you. The Holy Ghost lives in you. He's a comforter. He's a standby. He aids you and I. He lives within us. He's not somewhere out there aloof. He's in you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He's walking in you. He's living in you. And so, if the Bible says, I'll never leave you, nor shall I forsake you, it's a daily walk with God. You don't put, ah, oh, thank God we don't have a trinket, God, and I, you know, we're not idolatrous. We don't carry our God around like our phones. We put it down when we want God, we pick it up. No! He's with us all the time. So I'm walking with him. Do you know that he's experiencing everything that you experience? He feels your pain. The Holy Ghost is saddened. He's grieved over what grieves you. What pains you. And he's there trying to help you out of that dilemma. If you, if, if you forsake him and you fall into a pit, he don't leave you and leave you in the pit. He's down there with you waiting for you to come to your senses so he can lift you up out of the pit. A pit of despair, whatever it is. He's, he's, there, he's there right there trying to tell your daughter, son, I'm with you in this. So we're walking with him. Bless you. We pray that the message has been a blessing to you. And we'd like to encourage you to continue to go to our YouTube channel 
and uh, partake in these messages. We believe that each week there'll be something once again that will benefit you and look forward to up and coming events that also may come up and flash on the uh, message and video. We believe that the Lord will bless you richly as you continue to partake. God bless you. We love you.